Well, hello, 1P, and welcome to your new unit on geometry. Um, you'll notice that I don't have the goals page up here. I'm just going to talk at you for a couple minutes and try and show you a little demonstration and just talk to you uh, about angles. Um, now, hopefully you remember we measure angles in degrees. And if you go completely all the way around in a circle, you've turned 360 degrees. So if you turn 360 degrees, um, you've made one complete rotation. Well, what about if you only go halfway around a circle? Well, if you only go halfway around the circle, you've gone 180 degrees. So if you rotate halfway around, you've gone 180 degrees. Um, which makes sense, because if I take another uh, if I go another 180 degrees, 180 plus 180 whoop, is 360, which is one complete rotation. Okay, that's gone. Um, okay, so half a rotation is 180 degrees. Now, a line uh, like this one that I have here is considered to be half a rotation. Let's say that we have a pivot point right here, and I start here. And I take this and I pivot around, let's see if I can do this. I turn it around all the way, I'm still in the line over here. I've gone 180 degrees when I pivoted halfway around. There, pivot halfway around, half, half. So I've gone 180 degrees and the line's kind of back to being a line. So. A straight line, what we call a straight line, uh, we say it has 180 degrees in it, even though it's just a straight line. So a straight line has 180 degrees. What that actually means is if I put a bunch of angles out from this straight line, that when I add them all up, this angle in here, this angle in here, this angle in here, this angle in here, they all have to add up to 180 degrees. Um, if I draw any old angle, if I draw an angle like this and I say that this is 60 degrees, and then I split that angle. I don't know what those two things are. This one looks a little smaller than this one. I don't know what they are. Uh, let's call it A and call it B. Um, but I do know that if I add A and B together, I get the big angle. And I just told you the big angle was 60 degrees. So A plus B equals 60 degrees. Same thing happens over here. Our big angle is 180 degrees. So if I add up this angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle, I have to get 180 degrees. Okay. Now, you can actually take a protractor and measure it and do all that kind of stuff, but I'm just um, recapping what you should know about angles. Now we're going to talk about angles in a triangle. And I've drawn this nifty triangle. Isn't it pretty? It's so nice and colorful. Um, and I'm going to manipulate it because I want to pull this triangle apart. And I want to think of this triangle not as one geometric shape, but as three angles. And hopefully you can see those three angles here. I've got this angle, I got this angle, and I've got this angle. So there's my three angles. Now I am going to put those three angles together. I'm going to stick them together, and notice I put the nice little things in here. So I've got my blue angle, and I don't know how big that angle is. I have no idea. Um, I didn't put a protractor on it, I just drew it so that it was part of my triangle. Now I've got this angle here, I'm going to put its point next to the blue point. Ooh, here we go in here. Uh, like that. I'm going to put that point next to the blue point. Um, lost my little tool here. I gotta put them right together. Oh, there we go. There, that's nice. I'm gonna put the two tips right together, right there. Uh, now I need my red one. And I'm gonna maneuver my red one around. Oh, there we go. Pull it right in here like that. And again, I don't know what the blue angle, the red angle, or the green angle are. I did not put a protractor on them. But take a look at what they add up to. Um, this here forms a straight line. So I don't know what those three things are, 
But I do know that if I add A, B, and C, I get a straight line. So A plus B plus C has to equal 180 degrees. Uh, because all straight lines equal 180 degrees. Anytime I have a straight line and I split it up into a bunch of different angles, all those angles have to add to 180 degrees. Now don't forget where these angles came from in the first place. These angles all came from a triangle. It used to be a triangle. I'm going to pull this back around. Do, do. Let's see if we can put our triangle back together. There we go. And the last one, pull this around. These three angles all made up a triangle. Just like that. Uh, now this is important because I know, since those angles made up a straight line, that whatever this angle is, whatever this angle is, and whatever this angle is, I don't know what they are, but I do know that when I pull them apart and stick the tips of them together, they make a straight line, which is 180 degrees. And that works for every single triangle. This triangle's not special, I just drew a triangle. Okay, so now to the note part of this. Um, angles in a triangle. I know that all triangles have interior angles that add to 180 degrees and I can use this knowledge to solve problems. Now this is actually called, and this is important, this is the angle sum, sheesh, the angle sum, I don't like that color, let's use yellow. The angle sum of a triangle theorem is what this is called. The angle sum of the triangle theorem says that if I have angle A, angle B, angle C, and they all make up part of a three-sided figure that angle A plus angle B plus angle C has to add up to 180 degrees. So how does that help us here? Determine the unknown angle in the following triangles. All right, well, I know it has to add up to 180 degrees. So this plus this plus this has to equal 180. Well, how much do I have in the two known angles? I get 119 plus 34, and that's going to equal 153. So I've got 153. The rest of that 180 degrees has to come from B. So I do 180 minus 153. And 180 minus 153 is 27. So this angle up here, B, has to equal 27 degrees. And let's actually make this so that it's proper math form. Put the 27 down there and get rid of that equal sign there. Now we're going to do the same thing with this one. I know that those three things have to add up to 180 degrees. So I go 26 plus 45, because those are the ones that were already taken up. And that is 71 degrees and then I do 180 so my B is going to equal 180 minus 71 degrees uh, which is 109. Alright, so that was easy enough. Uh, can a triangle be formed that has the following angles? Well I don't know. Uh, they have to add up to 180 degrees. Um, let's add them up. 40 plus 60 plus 75. Uh, well, 40 and 60 is 100, so this is 175. The answer here is no. That will not form a triangle. This is not 180 degrees. Let's try this one. 14 plus 52 plus 118. Can't do that in your head? This one was easy in your head. 40 and 60 is 175, 175, no good. Can't do it in your head? Pull out your trusty calculator if you really need to. 14 plus 52 plus 118 equals 184. 184, let's try that again. Uh, clear, 14 plus 52 plus 118 equals 184. So what's our answer? No! Cannot form a triangle with that. It was not 180 degrees. We should put degree symbols on all of these things. Okay, next question. An isosceles triangle has two sides and two angles equal. 
Uh, if the two equal angles are 40, what is the remaining angle? So part A. There's no diagram here, so you should draw one. Triangle. It's isosceles. Isosceles triangle has two sides and two equal angles. Hopefully you remember that from your elementary school days. Um, if the two equal angles are 40, so this is 40 and this is 40, and I want to find out the remaining angle. This one up here. I'm going to put a big X there. Okay, always draw a diagram. So I know that all of these angles have to add up to 180 degrees. Well, how much is taken up by these lovely ones down here? Well, 40 plus 40 equals, or equals 80. And so the remaining angle, x, has to equal 180, whoop, 1800. No, 180 minus 80 degrees. Hopefully you can do that in your head. X must be 100 degrees. Now this is a really bad diagram uh, because that X is definitely not 100 degrees. Um, but you don't have to draw a diagram that's to scale to make it be a diagram that's good for you. Most math diagrams are not drawn to scale. Now this next one has nothing to do with this one that I just drew. I'm going to do part B. It says if a th the third angle is 92, what are the equal angles? So it's another isosceles triangle. So you draw my isosceles triangle. It doesn't look isosceles, but I'm going to say that this is equal to this. Um, and it says that this one in here is 92 degrees. And these two down here are the equal angles. So I've got an X here and an X here. Now, how much is taken up from the known? Well, that's 92. So I need to say, okay, I know 92 degrees, so these other two angles have to be 180 minus 92. Well, 180 minus 90 is 90, and then minus 2 is 88. So 88 degrees is how much we have left over. Well, I know I have two angles that have to equal 88 degrees. So I'm going to say I have two angles that I called x that have to equal 88 degrees. So I have to split those two, I have to split this 88 degrees between these two angles and since it's isosceles I have to split it equally. So if I split 88 into two equal parts, and we can do that algebraically as well, I have to divide both sides by 2. If we split it into two equal parts, x equals 44. And so therefore, the equal angles are both 44 degrees. And up here, the third angle is 100 degrees. And that concludes this lesson.